This presentation on transcription-mediated amplification, specifically the Aptima chlamydia gonorrhea assay, has been created for the University of Alberta Medical Laboratory Science Program and is presented by Dr. Karen Matika. Copyrighted material contained herein is reproduced under subsections 29 through 29.4 of the Canadian Copyright Act. This presentation is available for your individual use. Further distribution may infringe copyright. The 2015 CSMLS Competency Profile for General Medical Laboratory Technologists states that a technologist should be able to apply molecular diagnostic principles to identify nucleic acid sequences. They should also be able to assess results, identify sources of interference, errors, initiate corrective action, and or follow-up testing. In year three of the program, students will be training at DynaLife's core lab. During this training, students will analyze patient samples for chlamydia and gonorrhea using the Aptima combo assay on the Panther Analyzer. To prepare for that experience, this presentation will explain the principles of the assay. Transcription Mediated Amplification, TMA, is the amplification of ribosomal RNA by reverse transcription and subsequent amplification of RNA by RNA polymerase. The RNA products are detected by chemiluminescent probes. To understand this assay, we will review its components, ribosomal RNA, reverse transcriptase, and RNA polymerase. The image on this slide is of bacterial rRNA. rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, is synthesized from DNA by RNA's polymerase. Both bacteria and higher organisms have multiple copies of rRNA genes. These genes are constitutively transcribed. Subsequently, cells always produce ribosomal RNA. The target nucleic acid sequence for the chlamydia test is a region of the 23 ribosomal RNA, and the target for the Neisseria gonorrhea test is a region of the 16S ribosomal RNA. In the transcription-mediated assay, the ribosomal RNA target is the template for a reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptases have multiple enzymatic properties. They are RNA-dependent DNA polymerases, which can create complementary DNA from an RNA template, such as a ribosomal RNA. Reverse transcriptases have endonuclease activity and can degrade the RNA strand of DNA-RNA hybrids. And reverse transcriptases also have DNA-dependent DNA polymerase activity. This allows the conversion of single-stranded complementary DNA and double-stranded DNA. In the TMA assay, an oligo specific to the ribosomal RNA hybridizes to the rRNA. The RNA-dependent DNA polymerase activity at the reverse transcriptase uses the oligo as a primer and starts adding deoxyribonucleotides to the growing DNA strand by catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bonds. The endonuclease activity of the reverse transcriptase enzyme degrades the RNA, which was used as a template for cDNA synthesis. A primer hybridizes to the cDNA and is used as the starting point for the DNA-dependent DNA polymerase activity of the reverse transcriptase. This results in a double-stranded DNA molecule. Transcription-mediated amplification also uses T7 RNA polymerase. The enzyme is pictured on this slide. T7 RNA polymerase is an RNA polymerase encoded by the T7 bacteriophage. It is a double-stranded DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It is extremely promoter-specific and transcribes only DNA downstream of a T7 promoter. In TMA, the T7 RNA polymerase recognizes the T7 promoter oligo and initiates transcription. This results in the synthesis of multiple copies of RNA which have the same sequence as the original rRNA target. We have discussed the two enzymes used in the TMA, but we have not discussed the oligos and primers. 
we have a capture oligo. The three prime end of this capture oligo hybridizes to the target RNA. The five prime end of this oligo hybridizes to a magnetic particle. We also have a T7 oligo primer, which we saw on the last slide. This oligo primer has a five prime end with a T7 promoter sequence. The three prime end hybridizes upstream of the capture oligo. The third oligo that we have is the not T7 oligo or the NT7 oligo. It hybridizes to the cDNA that is made by the reverse transcription reaction. As well as having two enzymes and three oligos, the chlamydia and gonorrhea assay uses two single-stranded DNA probes, one for each target. The probes bind the target RNA in between the capture oligo and the T7 oligo. Each probe is labeled with a different chemiluminescent ester. Each probe has a different kinetic profile, which allows the differentiation of targets. There is a proprietary selection system that differentiates between bound and unbound probe. Now that we have discussed the reagents, let's put the assay together. Broadly speaking, the assay can be divided into four steps, lysis, capture, amplification, and detection. The first step of the assay is to lyse the prokaryotic cells to release their cellular contents, which include the target ribosomal RNA. The lysis solution also preserves the rRNA. The second step of the assay is to capture the ribosomal RNA. A polyadenosine sequence at the five prime end of the capture oligo binds to a complementary sequence on the magnetic particle. The three prime end of the capture oligo binds to the target ribosomal RNA. A magnetic field is applied and the magnetic particles are immobilized. Unbound specimen and lysis buffer are washed away. This is followed by the amplification of bound ribosomal RNA by reverse transcriptase and RNA polymerase. The amplification products are detected by the binding of the labeled DNA probes and the measurement of chemiluminescence. Let's take a closer look at the amplification step. At the top of the diagram, we can see that the target ribosomal RNA is bound by the capture oligo to the magnetic particle. We can also see that it is bound by the T7 oligo. The three prime end of the T7 oligo serves as a primer for the reverse transcriptase. The RNA-dependent DNA polymerase activity of the reverse transcriptase creates a cDNA molecule, while the RNA's H activity of the reverse transcriptase destroys the RNA template of the RNA-DNA hybrid molecule. The non-T7 oligo binds to the three prime end of the cDNA and serves as a primer for the reverse transcriptase to synthesize double-stranded DNA. Following the creation of double-stranded DNA from the ribosomal RNA template, multiple copies of RNA are synthesized. T7 RNA polymerase binds the T7 promoter to initiate transcription. This produces multiple copies of RNA, thus the original template sequence has been amplified. These new strands of RNA are converted to cDNA by the action of reverse transcriptase using the NT7 oligo as a primer. This creates a hybrid RNA-DNA molecule. The RNA's H activity of the reverse transcriptase destroys the RNA strand. The T7 oligo binds to the RNA and we go back to the beginning and the RNA polymerase using the T7 promoter produces more copies of RNA and again the original template has been amplified. The production of the RNA molecules is detected using chemiluminescent probes. The probes are single-stranded DNA molecules with a chemiluminescent acridium ester. Different esters are used for chlamydia and gonorrhea. These chemiluminescent labels also have different kinetic profiles. 
The chemiluminescent light is detected by a luminometer. There is a selection reagent that differentiates between hybridized probe and unbound probe, thus a wash step to remove unbound probe is not required. In summary, in the Athema combo assay, transcription-mediated amplification is used to amplify ribosomal RNA. Nucleic acids are separated from the rest of the sample using a capture oligo that binds the target ribosomal RNA and two magnetic beads. The assay requires two primers or oligos, as well as a reverse transcriptase and T7 RNA polymerase. The amplified RNA is detected using chemiluminescent probes. The following references were used in the production of this presentation.